Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. So in this video, we are going to learn about the energy band diagram and the working of a very special type of laser and there is nothing but a semiconductor laser. A semiconductor laser is formed from semiconductors such as gas and what is gas? It stands for gallium arsenide. So this is a type of semiconductor from which we are going to make a p-n junction and not only we are going to make a p-n junction but we are going to heavily dope it and what will be the result of this heavily doped? The result of this heavily doping is this that the p-region Fermi level will actually extend into the valence band and at the same time it will so happen that the Fermi level from the end region will actually extend into the conduction band. So with this situation we are going to now study the most important parameters of a laser and the three important parameters of a laser are the first of all is nothing but the active medium, the second is nothing but the energy source and the third is nothing but the resonating cavity. So the active medium in this particular case since we are using a p-n junction heavily doped p-n junction diode is nothing but the depletion region and in this depletion region there are no free charge carriers. So this becomes the active region. The second is the energy source or rather the pumping source. The pumping is done with the help of electric energy. So we are actually forward biasing the particular diode and it is because of electric energy that there is going to be pumping in this semiconducting diode. And the last is nothing but the resonating cavity. So the resonating cavity is nothing but the exposed part of the depletion region which is actually polished and it will so happen that it is this small cavity that actually will serve as the resonating cavity as the optical cavity for the laser avalanche effect and it is this that it is in this particular cavity that which is actually going to be of the order of an integral multiple of lambda by 2. So one end of this is going to be polished and the other end of this is going to be partially polished. So laser can come out from the partially polished end of the cavity which is nothing but the depletion region. The next we do is nothing but the functioning of this particular semiconducting laser. So whenever I forward bias this semiconductor p-n junction with a very small voltage then in this case it also happen that holes and electrons will be injected into the depletion region and in this depletion region it will so happen that they will recombine. They will recombine and light will be emitted during the recombination. This particular recombinations will not give a laser but rather it will lead to because all of these are nothing but spontaneous emissions. It will give rise to a LED type of emission. Now as I slowly increase the forward bias and when the forward bias is raised beyond a certain threshold value it will so happen that the electrons and the holes will be injected but they will be injected in a higher amount. Now in this case the amount that have been injected right the rate of injection will be is far higher than the rate of recombination and due to this it will so happen that you will have population inversion because this is the particular case for the population inversion. This means that there are more number of electrons in the conduction band and due to this since population inversion has been reached one of the spontaneously emitted photon will excite these particular electrons which are there in the conduction band and all of them will fall down to the valence band by recombining with the holes and due to this 
there will be emission of coherent radiation and due to the cavity which has already been formed in the depletion region there will be an avalanche multiplication of this radiations and we will have a high intensity laser that will be emitted the energy of this laser is equal to the difference between the bottom of the conduction band and the top of the balance band that is your band gap and therefore eg is equal to h into c by lambda and hence your lambda that is the wavelength that will actually be emitted is equal to hc upon your eg thus your wavelength is dependent upon the band gap of the semiconducting material for considering a very specific case the gas laser is going to give you a wavelength of around 8200 angstroms which is actually falling in the infrared region whereas the ga asp that is the gallium arsenide phosphorus laser is going to give you a wavelength of around 6400 angstroms that falls in the visible region so as an example of the semiconductor lasers we have the gas laser which is having a wavelength of 8400 angstroms and we also have the ga asp that is gallium arsenide phosphorus laser that is giving a wavelength of around 6500 angstroms sincere thanks students for watching this particular video stay tuned to ekeda and do subscribe to ekeda thanks a lot